Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. This is The Cube. The Cube is our live studio. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We're going into our cloud segment. We got a lot of stuff today on, on cloud. We've been talking, we talked storage yesterday. Uh, did a lot of server stuff this morning. Now we're going to get di dig in deep to the cloud action. Bill Hilf is here as the Senior Vice President, Product and Services Management for HP Cloud. HP Cloud is come a long way in the last couple of years. So thanks very much for coming to theCUBE, good to have you. It's great to be here. So give us the quick update. Uh, you guys have been active with announcements. You made the Helion announcement a few weeks ago. Uh, you, got, you made a network announcement uh, recently. So give us the update on HP Cloud. You got it, and as you can probably see as you guys walked in here, the Helion branding all over uh, uh, the show floor and uh, we're, we're really excited by it. I mean, and so for, for us, HP Helion, uh, it's not just one product, it, it's basically the, the brand name of our pan HP cloud portfolio and everything we're doing from products and services will, that will fall underneath that brand. Uh, and so we've, uh, since May when we brought this out in, into the world, um, what, he, what we've announced with Helion is a set of products and services underneath that, that brand name um, that provide infrastructure as a service if a customer wants to build it or if they want to consume it through a public cloud, uh, as well as a set of uh, uh, tools for developers to build on top of. Uh, so we have a whole host of announcements we're making this week. Awesome, so the brand is a good brand. I mean, I like the name. Where did it come from? Oh, good question. Um, well, we wanted something that was unique uh, to both what we were doing in the cloud space, targeting, really we target you know, open-based enterprise clouds. Uh, customers that want to build a hybrid cloud architecture using the best of breed open source technologies, but supported from one of the large IT vendors. Uh, so we want, we didn't want to just call it you know an HP cloud you know widget. Uh, we wanted something that was unique. So we we took I mean no joke probably six seven thousand names legal scrubs. <laughs> you can't tell you the amount of marketing and, and legal URLs what right. are available. What's available? <laughs> Translation. Translate. Yeah. Does it mean like you know spotted monkey in some yeah. other language? Yeah. Looked on a phone. Like yeah, and, and we came down <laughs> about about four or five and. Um, you know, to, just to be fully transparent, it ended up, because you can never pick a perfect name after we tested our own employees, and we got down to four or five, and then a group of us sat down and, and picked uh, Helion. Excellent. All right, so um, talk about the strategy uh, before we get into some of the products and services. Yeah, so for us, um, and I've, I, I'm, I'm a year in an HP now, and I, I previously I was uh, GM of at Windows Azure at Microsoft, and so I spent a, a considerable amount of time talking to enterprises and governments and service providers about cloud computing in general. Um, and there's been a few common themes. One is uh, enterprise customers are going to use a mix of technologies to build a cloud. Uh, and, and I personally believe that over time, the terms public and private and man, those will just disappear and we'll, and we'll use the cloud computing the same way that we think about the web today. It's not a place that we go anymore, it's part of everything that we use. Um, so from a marketing point of view, we call it the fabric of an enterprise because we believe that customers will build uh, the cloud that they need, not necessarily the cloud that a vendor's trying to describe. So against that, that, that vision, what we've built is a, a cloud portfolio that is very composable. So we have the, the choice for customers to use our software, our servers, our storage, our networking, our services in a way that they can compose the type of cloud they're trying to build. Uh, and so we've built, built a lot of that around open source technologies like OpenStack and Cloud Foundry. Um, and over the past six months, um, past year really, we've been working on productizing a full commercial distribution of OpenStack so that if a customer wants to build a cloud or consume a cloud, um, using OpenStack technologies, they have you know, a large stress event like HP behind it. From Not only from the support point of view, but we test it at extreme scale, 40,000 or more virtual machines running in this environment. We run it ourselves in our own public cloud, um, and we apply all the security and, and, um, and sort of enterprise class uh, rigor that we put into all of our other product lines uh, into OpenStack. Uh, so that's the core, Helion OpenStack's the core of our portfolio, and this week we're announcing pricing related to that. We're announcing a new development platform that sits on top of that. Um, and then across everything that we do at HP, this will be a, 
a very important foundation uh, and really a cloud operating system for everything that we do going forward. So I got to ask you, so your scenario, the, the vision that you put forth is that a lot of these buzzwords are going to sort of coagulate, come together, and we're not going to have you know, so much nuance between public and private and hybrid and on-premise and off-premise and public, et cetera. Having said that, when you listen to guys like Andy Jassy at AWS, he's got a different view of the world than you guys. Yeah. It's almost two ends of the spectrum. He will say, we believe there are very few companies that are going to have their own data centers in the future. You believe, I think, not to put words in your mouth, but the others that I've talked to at HP, that most customers are going to have some mix of on-premise and off-premise for their cloud. So you got two ends of the spectrum. So do you really see those two worlds coming together, or is, is, do you feel like that premise is off, the, the, the AWS premise is off base, and is just missing the enterprise uh, uh, marketplace? What are your thoughts on that? That's a fantastic question, it really is. And, and you know, for, for I'll, I'll try to contextualize it to my own experiences. Over the past five years, I've talked uh, to literally thousands of customers about cloud computing and the enterprise. Um, I've been very fortunate to be in these two different roles to be able to have that conversation. Good place to be. It is, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I've, I've taught, you know, name the country, name the industry, um, I've talked to them. And literally across thousands of customers, not, not one time <laughs> has a customer said, I'm moving everything I have to one spot. I don't care if it's a public cloud or what. Uh, uh, now, if you talk to a startup, you're building Instagram or Snapchat, and you're building it from new, from file new, it's very different. Of course you're going to start with a public cloud, because that's the easiest, cheapest way to do it. But for an enterprise, the idea of moving everything into one basket is just not realistic. Um, and so, which is why you don't see a lot of, of Amazon being used in broad enterprise. You see a lot of startups using it, or companies like a Netflix, right? Where they need that type of horizontal scale. Uh, so I do think there is there's a difference in terms of, of strategic intent. What I believe will happen over time is the public cloud will become in many ways similar to sort of the web tier and a three tier architecture, where it's used for very scalable um, horizontal applications like a you know streaming media for the Olympics or or you know or, or videos on demand or um, the types of mobile services that where you have to push a notification out to 10,000 different mobile devices. Um, but in an enterprise environment, there's still not just legacy systems, but scale up systems, SAP systems, Oracle systems, that really don't want to run on a multi-tenant shared infrastructure. They, if you take a system like SAP HANA, SAP HANA really wants every resource on that box it can get, all the memory it can possibly get, and it doesn't want to share that resource. Uh, so saying that it, you know, uh, IT and enterprise IT will go into one modality, um, is at least in my experience not not very real yeah. uh, because it's usually I had a CIO tell me just down the hall here, um, he said literally Bill I have one of everything that almost every vendor has ever made and he goes so I'm not an HP shop I'm not I'm not a Microsoft I've got one of everything in my environment so the idea of a composable system, a, a tool set that they can architect with is very appealing. There's a lot of diversity in clouds, you're right. I mean, you see bare metal clouds, you see, you know, let's say, multi-tenant clouds, you got guys like ServiceNow that are doing, not doing multi-tenant clouds, so there's That's a right. lot of diversity That's in right. clouds. I think it was great because we had Bill Vecti on earlier, and he really talked about cloud not in terms of the infrastructure, but really the benefits, right? The benefit of, of rapid delivery, the benefits of rapid scale. You That's know, right. a lot of the yeah. things that are delivered that we think of cloud, and maybe we're kind of pioneered in kind of a cloud-centric view of the world, but ultimately it's benefits to the business user and the IT users in terms of how you deploy exactly. and scale yeah. infrastructure. Yeah, Bill, I mean, I've known Bill for, for over a decade, and uh, he's a great friend. Uh, we talk, he and I talk a lot about this as well, is, it, you know, and there is a, a reality check, kind of going to your point about uh, the, the, you know, the Amazon view of the world, mm -hmm. which is in 2014, I fundamentally, fundamentally believe, HP fundamentally believes, Enterprise IT is a lot smarter about cloud computing than it was six, sure. seven years ago. When it was, hey, I can swipe a credit card yes. and get some cheap compute over the internet through a web browser. Today, enterprise IT can get to a point where they can look at um, a, a type of system, say, I can get near those same economics, near that same agility, without having to give up all the concerns I have around data sovereignty or, or privacy or security. I can get near that model. So the benefits of the cloud, and I will give Amazon and Salesforce full credit for helping drive the pioneering yeah, of really this in the early days. Yeah, forward. Um, the benefits of agility and the economics are still real. I think the, the, the very simplistic thinking of it's going to be private or public, I think we're near the end days of those, of those concepts. And it, just like we no longer say, let's get on the information superhighway <laughs> or go to the web, 
it's now part of everything that we do. Cloud computing is going through that same evolution. Yeah, with the, with the exception, the notable exception of Amazon and Google, right? That, that are driving that, that public only, because that's, that's right, really all right. they got. And that's in their business interest, and, and right. So, and I wanted to unpack security a little bit, because I think our thinking about security has evolved, because it was easy for us in the enterprise to say, oh, public cloud is not secure. Now, you know from your experience as Azure, you're now at HP, and everybody you talk to, security is the number one priority sure, in any yeah. cloud. It's not necessarily that the public cloud, cloud security is bad. It's, it's just different, right? So my question to you is, and I've talked to a lot of customers, for instance, that will negotiate with, say, even a, 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 a SaaS company, negotiate a security policy, and then they'll maybe partner with Amazon to do a public cloud service, but the security's different. Mm -hmm. They got to spend another six months doing it, so they say, forget it. So my question to you, can H, will HP go to a customer and say, your security experience, your compliance, policy, audit, everything else, can be identical on-premise and off-premise if you want it to be? Is that the strategy? Or are you not going to get there in the near term? I think, yeah, I mean, part of the, you, you are fundamentally right. Across any cloud computing conversation, security is still, and I, I mean, public, private, managed, security is still at the top of the list of concerns that, and you have everything from sort of the Snowden you know, episode, you have what happened with you know, large retailers in the US, all these different reasons why that's an issue. Um, security is a broad spectrum. You have, on some cases, how do I secure my web app? And then on other cases you have uh, regulated industries or, or government agencies that might have a FedRAMP requirement or even an ITAR requirement, which is weapons grade compliance for, for exports of, of, of US uh, uh, intellectual property. In that world where you have that wide variety of spectrum, you have to really choose the right solutions and workloads that you're going to secure. There is no generic security, you know, uh, like people tend to think, oh, encryption and everything's fine. Well, obviously yeah, yeah. that's not the case. Um, so in, when people are designing architectures, a cloud architecture, understanding what data, what app, where those things live, what, need, what security requirements exist, that's the reason why we're building a common platform against a public cloud, a private cloud, or a managed cloud. The reason behind that common uh, uh, platform is, a customer may say, this app here, I actually need this to be in a public cloud because it's very horizontally scalable, it's a mobile backend, or I just want the best economics I can possibly get. But if I ever need to, let's say the compliance landscape changes, let's say the regulatory landscape changes, which it tends Should to be do. Win, right, <laughs> not, not um, if, win. And they need to move <laughs> that somewhere else. Um, and that, that change, all of a sudden they're in a re-architecting migration scenario, and if you're in a pure, pure play public cloud, you're going to have to say, how do I extract that data and application now into this other environment? So that, that's how we're differentiating, say we have a common platform that's open source based, it can run in any of these environments, and now it's part of our announcements around Helion Network, run in, in third party service provider environments, not just our own HP Public Cloud, um, to give that choice and flexibility to customers when it comes to big issues like security. Now we do have many customers that we deal with where it's not just um, uh, security in the sense of I'd like, I don't want people to access my data, we have many customers who work with that have life critical systems healthcare systems, hospital systems, airline systems, where security has a, not, not just a, a requirement, it, it means something different. And those types of systems, we typically can help a customer in a purely managed environment where we can say, we always know exactly where those servers and that data and the people and the chain link and the dogs around the data center, where they need complete and total understanding of that environment. All right, real quick, I, I, I'm just ignoring the guy telling me we got to go. So, because you're really good and smart and you got a lot of good perspective. I wanted you to touch on a couple things. The Helion de development platform. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Sure, so part of, I mean, part of having a cloud solution is not just the virtual machine infrastructure or the infrastructure as a service, but how do you abstract all of that even higher up the stack for developers? Often the platform as a service or PaaS, right? right. So Formerly known as middleware. Uh, for, the, art, the artist formerly known as middleware, that's right. Um, I used to work for IBM software a long time ago. Um, and it's funny, a lot of these terms, you know, what we call now you know, message queues, we used to call enterprise service brokers, yes, even before yes. that transaction processing monitors. Um, but what, what is important is developers want those services like database as a service, messaging as a service, identity, you know, um, exposed even higher up in the stack. So we, like OpenStack, we're, we're making a commitment to an open source project called Cloud Foundry, uh, where we're a platinum member of the Cloud Foundry Foundation that's forming right now, to help drive a similar agenda with others, with IBM, Pivotal, Rackspace, VMware, a whole bunch of different partners um, are coming together to build an open source based platform as a service 
with the same design intent that we have that it will run in any of those environments that a customer wants. So they don't only have to pick the public cloud platform as a service, they could say, yeah, I want to run some there and I want to run some here, I don't want to change my app. Right, so that's something we're announcing this week as a preview. In this so that's a Cloud Foundry collaboration? We call right? it, yeah, so we take Cloud right? Foundry and we build around that, yep. and we call that the Helion Development Platform. Okay. And we'll have a, we have a preview of that coming out this month. And then you got collaboration with Intel around OpenStack? Yeah, it's a about? great partnership with Intel where uh, essentially there's some great capabilities um, in the hardware that we want to illuminate all the way up through OpenStack and all the way up through Cloud Foundry. So we're partnering with, Open, uh, with Intel on how do we take advantage of some of their innovations in, in the hardware and make that come to life in Helion OpenStack so that it becomes uh, even easier and simpler to take advantage of uh, some of the powerful things. Well, I got to put you in the spot a little bit. Yeah. You know, sorry to do this, but Martin Fink's not here, so I got to ask you. Wall Street Journal, article, Red Hat, back and forth. Yeah, Martin yeah. made the comments. What's your, your take on, on Red Hat? They're becoming a competitor now in, in OpenStack, but obviously a, a great partner over the years. Uh, what's your take on what they're doing in OpenStack? Yeah, and, and, and certainly, you know, I, I work for Martin. He knows a thing or two about open source. Um, uh, he's been through this, uh, the, this uh, area before. Um, I do think you're seeing sort of a, an evolution in the different vendors as they're trying to really get their strategies laid out. Um, as I mentioned, we have a you know kind of a, a clear line of sight in what enterprise and service provider wants in, 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 a, in a hybrid open uh, cloud. Um, I think Red Hat, because they are a, a software only company, they have to make certain strategic decisions around how they will monetize their entire stack from the host operating system to OpenStack and above. Um, so I actually understand why sure. they're doing it. Um, they're, they just have more limitations in terms of their overall business uh, capabilities of what they will, will monetize. Um, certainly it's something I knew at Microsoft as well. Um, and so one of the things that we're doing at HP is, we have a pretty broad business portfolio. We sell storage, servers, networking, we sell services, we sell software, we sell consumption services through our public cloud. So we can be very aggressive in, in the way that we want to help customers adopt OpenStack, the pricing that we're going to offer. Um, I do think they, you know, Red Hat has some big questions they need to figure out in their business model related to how do they want to work with the community. Because as you well know, uh, how you can, it's not just taking from, you have to be a, a vibrant member inside of that community and work upstream as much as possible. Uh, so they're going to they're gonna have to struggle and figure out their position. So you'd that. like to see though, to be specific, you'd like to work with Red Hat and have them certify their Linux distribution on your OpenStack absolutely, platform, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That, that's something that you would push for. For sure, I take that phone call any day. I take that phone call any day. And the same goes with, you know, we've worked a lot with Canonical, a great partner we worked with in terms of getting Ubuntu support and that type of thing, great. so you bet. All right, Bill, thanks very much for coming on the Cube. Yeah, it's really a pleasure it having you. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. All right, keep it right there, yeah, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is the Cube.